Hello, Literature and Writing 338 students. Welcome to part one of lesson one. Um, this little video talks about the question, what message is the text communicating? All right, so as I said, in literary analysis, we are looking to understand what message the text communicates. So this is a quote from Margaret Atwood, and the idea here is that she says, the way we approach a text affects the way we understand that text. So the answers that we get from literature depend on how we ask the question. So I mentioned there are two questions that we're asking about literary analysis. What message does the text communicate and how does the text communicate that message? So here we're going to focus on what message does the text communicate. Um, in particular, a text is using language to tell someone something. Like even if you're writing a text for yourself, like a journal, it still is a communication between a writer and a reader, a reader and a writer. There's this dialogue, there's a communication between them. That's what a text is, whether the text is a piece of literature, a book, whether the text is a film, whether the text is a journal, all written things are texts and many visual things are texts. A music, you can read a song, right? Mm -hmm. And it's the text that I keep emphasizing, not the author or the director or the writer, even though those, those people are important, they obviously make the text, but the author's intention can't you can't mix that up with the text itself, right? The, the author may or may not intend for you to understand things in a particular way, but once that text exists, once you've written the text and then given it to the world, it exists outside of the author, it exists outside of you, and people interpret it in their own way that you may or may not have intended for them to interpret it. So we look at the text, what the text does, not what the author wanted it to do. We may know that, and that may be a, a good thing. The text itself is what we're concerned with here, and the text exists separate from the author once it's sort of released from the author. So the text's language is how that message gets developed, and we're going to talk a lot more about how in, a, in the next video. So when a text communicates a message, not just an idea, and this is really important. This is kind of the focus of the rest of this video. It makes a statement or a claim about the idea. So love is not a theme. You'll see people say the theme of the text is love. No, that's the topic of the text. What claim does the text make about love? Love sucks. Love is the most important thing in the world and you should sacrifice your life for it. Love is best when it's balanced. Like what's, what claim about love is true? That claim is the theme. Message and theme are essentially the same for me. I'm going to like use those words interchangeably. So the answer to the question, what message does the text communicate? I call an argument or a thesis or an interpretation. That's you. That's you, what you have decided you think the text means. And that's going to be unique to each person. Each person might see something slightly different in the text. That's totally normal. We each bring with us stuff that affects how we interpret. And so we're each going to have our own interpretation. That's fine, as long as you can support it with evidence, which we'll talk about in the next video. All right, so an argument doesn't explain what happens. That's called a summary. Instead, it explained why that happens and what it means that it happens. And what I mean by what it means is what message does that send? Um, and there are three traits of a good argument that you should be thinking about for this class. It's that they should be debatable, specific, and complex. First off, your argument has to be debatable. It has to be something that people could disagree with. If you can't disagree with it, if it's like, well, there's no way to disagree, then you're not making an argument. You're making an observation about something that happened in the text, not about what it means that it happened. So like, for example, here's my examples from the Lorax. It's not debatable that the Lorax is about a man who cuts down all the trees, which is, destroys the environment. That's just what happens. That's plot. That's not theme. No one can argue with you about that because that's just what happens in the text. What you argue about is what does it mean? If that's the plot, what does that imply? What message does that send? How do we infer things from that plot? So it is to be able to say that the Lorax suggests that greed inevitably leads to the destruction of the world, right? That's a debatable thing. You could argue that that's not the message of the Lorax. So if you know that someone else could disagree with it, you're on the right track. Uh, if it's not arguable, then it's probably not theme. You're probably dealing with plot. Okay. It also needs to be specific. And this kind of goes back to what I said in an earlier slide. It has to do more than identify the topic. That's the thing that we most naturally first see because it's like, what's the story about? The answer is gonna be a topic, love, family, friendship, right? Those are, those are things that a story is about. But we need to know what claim the text is making about the topic. What is the text saying is true about love or friendship or you know, insert topic here, right? Here's some examples. The Lorax is about environmentalism. That's a topic, environmentalism. You might like it, you might hate it, it's just a topic. So that's not specific enough because we're not uh, to the claim yet. Next then, what about environmentalism? Well, maybe the Lorax argues that the environment should be more important than profit. 
that's making a claim, right? That shows me the text stance towards environmentalism, its attitude towards it. Environmentalism is important. We need to privilege it over other things like profit. Here's another example. The Lorax contends that we must find a balance between using and preserving environmental resources. So note that this is different than the previous one. It's not the same theme. Somebody else might get a slightly different theme. In this one, it's like not that environmentalism is good or bad, but that the, the point of environmentalism is to find a balance. And that's what's valued in the text, right? We have to find this balance. That's how we can move forward. That's the theme or a theme. So the final thing is complexity. So once you have a debatable specific argument, you got to try to develop the complexity as you go. You might consider factors of things. You ask limits, the, you ask questions, you see what the limits are. And eventually sort of all your ideas are going to build in a paper to this sort of, so what? If this is true, if this is the theme, why does that matter? Why is it important that we understand this message, right? What does it teach us? In order to develop complexity, once you have an argument, like so in this one, the lower X argues that the environment should be more important than profit. First off, you can begin with why. Why is the environment more important than profit? Why do we need to privilege it more than money? What is it about it that makes it important? Is it because like, for example, there'll be no profit if there's no environment, for example, that kind of thing. And is this universal or specific? Is this something that you're arguing is true for the whole world? Is this something that you're arguing is like, that the Lorax is arguing is true for just like a particular place in the world? Does this only apply to certain people? What are the limiting factors? Should we have no profit at all? How much does, you know, sort of destruction of truffle trees is an acceptable amount? What are some of the larger implications? If the environment is more important than profit, then what does that mean for, what is the Lorax suggesting about how we should live our lives in, in essence? And then specifically, always, how does it relate to you? What does that mean for how you live your life? Those are my thoughts about what message the text communicates and how to develop an effective argument. Stay tuned for the next video on how does the text communicate that message. All right.